Hello everyone. Today I would like to talk to you about cybersecurity, a topic many would be happy to avoid discussing because they don't fully understand the subject and they don't want to be embarrassed. When I mention cybersecurity, it conjures up an image of an attacker or a hacker trying to aggressively break into your bank account or steal information. But what does a cyber attack actually mean? Does it mean stealing usernames and passwords? Or does it mean remotely listening to your conversations or accessing your video feed from a different location? Does it mean breaking into your bank account and transferring money? Or does it mean locking up your computer and asking for ransom? Or does it mean causing blackouts on the power grid and causing significant damage? A successful cyber attack can result in any of these. And it varies based on the sophistication of the attacker. A naive rookie hacker might only be interested in your username and passwords, whereas a motivated nation state which has the resources and the time can be trying to cause a bigger damage like attacking your critical infrastructure like electric utilities, oil and gas, manufacturing plants and so on. It's estimated that cybercrime will cost the world six trillion dollars annually by 2021. When we look at some of the biggest data breaches and hacks that have occurred in the past two three years we see organizations of all sizes and scale. Companies like Facebook, Twitter, Marriott Hotels, Uber, Zoom, Equifax, you name it, everyone had been a victim of cyber attack at some point in time. Organizations have stopped asking the question whether they will be breached. They all understand that it's only a matter of time when they get breached. When we look at some of the statistics from last year on data breaches, in 2019, a total of 1,473 data breaches have occurred, which is an uptick of 17% from 2018. And when we look at the number of records that got compromised, we see that a total of 164 million sensitive records got exposed. These are things like your personally identifiable information, social security numbers, bank accounts, and so on. When we look at the non-sensitive records that got exposed, a total of 705 million records were compromised. And these things are things like your usernames, passwords, email addresses. When we look at which sector got hit the most, we see that banking credit financial sector had a total of 100 million records that got compromised. And the second one that comes here is medical healthcare sector with 39 million records. That got compromised. So the question is how did we get here? It was about 50 years ago when we made two computers to talk to each other. Fast forward to now we have about 4 billion people around the world connected to the internet. We have our smartphones, laptops, cars, light bulbs, everything connected to the internet. They are constantly chatting among themselves and updating us with their statuses. This interconnectivity makes it very much attractive to the attacker because he needs to be able to find only one weakness in a software application or a device that we use and try to break into the network. In cybersecurity, we say there is an asymmetry between defenders and attackers. A defender needs to make sure that all of the assets that he has, software applications, devices, and so on, he needs to make sure they don't have any weaknesses and they cannot be compromised. So he spends a lot of time trying to secure this environment. An attacker needs to only find one weak link through which he can break in. And so the battle goes on between attackers and defenders. So the question now is how can we protect our digital world? Let me talk to you about how we do it in the physical world. Let's say at your workplace you received a sensitive confidential document that you were asked to keep it safe and secure. So what you do is you put that document in your cabinet and lock it up 
And when you're leaving for home, you also make sure that you lock your office door. Your department, which is on some floor in the building, is already secured by an exterior door. So you are feeling good about it. And then finally, at the entrance of your office building, there is a reception desk with security people who are checking visitors whether they should be allowed to enter or not. So this is how your physical defenses are working. So the idea here is any attacker who's trying to now steal this document that you got locked up in your cabinet needs to jump through so many hoops, so many defenses. And the idea is even if he is able to circumvent one of these barriers, he would be caught at the other defense barrier. So this is called, this approach is called defense in depth. We take the same philosophy to our digital world. We see that we have different assets that we are interested in protecting. It starts with the devices that you have, your smartphones, your iPads or tablet devices, your laptops that you use to daily conduct your work. They must be first secured in the first place, right? That, that, that piece of device through which you are connecting to the network must be secure. Then we look at the applications that you use. It could be your email application or a video conferencing application or a communication tool. We must make sure that that application is free from weaknesses or bugs. It's able to do the job it is supposed to be doing in a safe and secure manner. It, it shouldn't be leaking data. And then the data that we are inputting into the application should be encrypted, encoded in a safe manner that, that, that there is no vulnerabilities there, there is no problems there. And then finally, when we are transmitting, when we are communicating with our own colleagues in the office network or we are communicating with outside parties, we must make sure that the network on which these data packets are transmitted, that whole thing, that, that chain is also secure. There is no outsider trying to hack into your office network at the same time the things that you are sending over the network must also be securely transmitted and received by the end user. So we need to secure the network as well. So we look at the same, we take the same defense in depth approach here and we try to secure all of the things that we are uh, using on a daily basis. So what do we do now? So what is the plan of action? So first we must identify all the things that are connected to the network, that are in our environment. If we don't see a particular device or an asset that is on our network, then we cannot plan to protect it. It's, it's not visible to us, so we may overlook it and that may be the vector through which an attacker might penetrate our networks. So first and foremost, we need to make sure that we have 100% visibility into our environments and the assets that are connected to the network. Then the next thing we can think about is how do we protect each of these assets? Now there could be uh, one uh, a solution that you can use to protect multiple assets or you can buy different best of breed technologies to protecting different things. So you could decide to protect your laptops with one technology, your mobile devices with another technology, your applications with another technology and so on. Then let's say we got all of this in place, but we are still unsure. Like, let's say even though all of these defenses are in place, what if an intruder is able to hack into my network? That's a legitimate question. So if somebody intrudes into your network, you must be able to detect that event immediately and take action. So you need to think about detection technologies. How quickly are you able to uncover a malicious behavior or an anomalous event. Once you have that, you must also think about your response to that attack. So you must be working right towards containing the extent of that attack. Maybe that hacker was only able to access non-sensitive information. He is not able to still put his hands on your crown jewels. So you must have a plan in place by which you will be able to contain that attack, respond to that attack. And finally, you need to think about how you can recover from an attack, how you can 
get back to normalcy, how you can communicate the extent of the impact with all of the stakeholders involved. Now, when we take the actions that we need to take, which are like identifying assets, protecting the assets and detecting, respond and recover, which are seen at the horizontal axis here at the top of the table, and then overlay it with the assets we want to protect, which are your devices, applications, networks, data, and users, we get a five by five matrix that looks like this. Using this matrix, we can think about how to secure the assets that we are interested in securing. This could be in the devices category, your laptops, your servers, networking gear, in your applications, these are your email communication applications and networks. So this five by five matrix gives us a map to think about cybersecurity for your organization, for your smart home or a smart factory or whatever environment you're trying to protect. Unfortunately, there is no one size fits all solution in cybersecurity. It's not like your social networks. Like it's not like there's a winner take all uh, situation here. When people bring up the word network effects, they are thinking about one winner or a couple of winners in the whole space. Like think about Facebook is the player in social networking, social media. When you think about search engines, there is Google. Unfortunately, there is no one winner in cybersecurity. The reason is the, uh, the landscape is so dynamic. The threats are evolving every day. The attack surface is expanding. And so you have both defenders and attackers actively working every day trying to you know, do their jobs. In our next part, what I'm going to do is talk about the overall cybersecurity market and the various sub-segments in the market. And then I'm going to look at some public companies and then discuss what are the trends we are seeing in cybersecurity landscape today. Thank you for watching this and look forward to seeing you in the next video.